Hey traders, Akil Stokes here and welcome to another episode of The Trading Blog, your daily dose of trading inspiration. A somewhat busy day in the markets for me. I'm currently involved in about four trades. I took a short on the dollar yen this morning uh, based off a bearish cipher formation along on the pound dollar this morning. We had a kind of a falling wedge uh, coming into a previous level of structure support. I am also still short Dollar Canada from yesterday. That trade is uh, not looking too good right now, but it's putting up a fight uh, right at a key level of structure resistance. So as long as we don't penetrate or as long as we don't invalidate that level, um, there's no need to get concerned. And then I got stopped out of the Aussie Canada trade that we've been tracking all week. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, uh, it was a trade we took last week where it rose up for about 90 pips uh, on target one. I shared with you guys in yesterday's video how we were trailing that trade and locking in about 120 pips of uh, worst case potential profit. And well, I guess I jinxed myself. Either that or the very, very, very bad uh, Aussie news that came out last night uh, gave us a lot of Aussie weakness, uh, continued Aussie weakness today and stopped me out for 120 pips on trail stops. Not bad for a trail stop though, right? But uh, anyway, we actually did some more analysis on that trade today. One of our live room members gave me a heads up and I re-entered on um, a different advanced pattern opportunity uh, in a very similar trade, how we can trade it um, very close to how we did the first time. So I'm, I've reloaded in that position and uh, we'll see if we can go two for two on that trade. It's been a, on that pair. It's, it's been a very good pair this year. Um, it's actually one of my favorite pairs of all time. Uh, but what I want to talk to you guys about today is backtesting. We had a few conversations on backtesting in our live trading room. Uh, one was about, hey, how do I keep track of trades? How do I journal trades? I talked about how, you know, I'm a real hands-on type of person where I like to, you know, I have Excel spreadsheets where I like to enter them manually. That way I, I get a feel and really stay up to date with what's going on in the market. But we also talked about a few uh, websites or a few programs that you can use that will automatically help journal your trades and really give you uh, an easier look at some of the more intricate details um, in your trading, which will hopefully provide you opportunities to become more efficient. Then later on in the live room session, we had a question about how backtesting can become monotonous, how it can become boring and how do you deal with that? And what I want to do for you guys today is show you some footage from that live room session of the conversation that we had involving that topic. No, not what? No, never. No, I, I here's the thing about trading, guys, right? Trading is not about it. it, it it's not about excitement. Trading is not about doing something that gets you excited, excited, gives you that rush, gets your heart beating, gets your fingers twitching, right? That's not about that. that that's what rookie amateur traders do, right? This is my profession. I trade to make money. I trade to make money. I don't, I don't, if I want excitement, I'll go to the casino. I'll go to a, I'll go to a, a soccer match or a football game if I want excitement. I like when my trading trading's boring. It means I'm doing good. Um, and, and what do you mean? Or what do you mean by you said not live trading but back testing? Well, what do you mean by switching up my back testing? How how can you switch up back testing? You mean like testing testing one thing and then stopping halfway through and testing something else. Okay. Um, I wouldn't, I mean, you could do that if you're, if you get bored. Um, I wouldn't recommend it though. It could be, I have a task completion thing, but I wouldn't recommend it. Like why? I don't, I don't see the point of, of testing something halfway and then stopping and, and testing something else halfway. It seems like you would never get anything accomplished. That's how I would see it. If, 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 I, if, if a trader said, hey, Keel, I'm supposed to do five years of back testing on 2618s, and then they get through two years, and then they stop, and they trade, they start testing Fibonacci failures for two years, and they stop, and they start testing trend continuation trading for two years and stop. I feel like the trader's just doing a lot of work for no reason, because they're never completing anything. They're never putting themselves in a position to move forward. So to me, there's, there's no, what's the point? What would be the point of doing that? 
You're not doing anything to benefit your trading. You're, you're never acquiring the data that you need to move forward. You're screwing your, your, RS, your, your RAS, right? You're screwing up your ability to, to find and locate said strategy because you're bouncing from one thing to another, right? So you're never building your, identif your, your ability, your skill to identify said strategy on a chart. You're never acquiring data to see if it's profitable or not. In my opinion, it's, it's just a big waste of time. So I, I would say no. I, you know, if it's if it if it gets boring, right? If back testing gets boring, get a hobby. Learn how to play a, a guitar. Go run with the bulls, right? Climb a mountain. Write a song. Play a sport. Go jump off a cliff, right? If you get bored, do something exciting with your off time, right? But as far as trading goes, trading is a business. It's not about excitement. It's not about boring. It's not. A, it's it's a business. You're here to make profit, and you're here to do what needs to be done to put yourself in a position to make profit. Take a break. Take a week off, maybe. That'll give you some chance to to reset. Take a week off and and focus on you know something else. Focus on watching older videos or something like that. And maybe that'll give you the kind of the, the respite from from being bored. Um, but I don't I don't think you want to start testing something else. I'm I'm a firm believer in, in in focusing on one thing to test, and then doing that one thing really really good, and then trading that one thing profitably, and then moving on to the next thing. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, both from a business aspect of putting yourself in a position where you can actually start making money and from a skill set aspect where you're 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 focused 100 percent on learning that single skill instead of focused 10 percent on learning 10 other skills on vacation yeah but that's a good that's a good question that's a good question because back testing does get boring i mean it, it does and when it gets boring and monotonous sometimes you make mistakes sometimes you start to rush through Right. It's kind of like, you know, like reading a book where, you, you know, I, I think we've all done this. You read a book and like the first three chapters, you're extra, you're pumped. You're like, oh, man, this guy is he's speaking my language. He's in my brain. This is awesome. And then you get to like page 100 and the message just seems like it's the same message. Like, I know he said this already in chapter three. And then you start speed reading because now it's just about getting through the book and not actually taking in the content. Back testing is the same way. Everyone starts off excited. Right. You do like your first year. You're like, oh man, profitable in the first year, seventy percent win rate. Whoop whoop, let's do this. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I got to get through three more years. And you get to year two, and you're like, okay, whoop whoop, yeah, it was already profitable. It's still profitable. Whatever. Then you get to year three, and you're like, all right, I just want to get done this. I just want to get to my stinking hundred trades so I can stop. And when you do that, you start rushing through the process. Maybe you start overlooking trades. You start not taking as much. Uh, account of details that you should be right so that's normal so I, I i definitely understand the question yeah definitely understand the question um and it's tough it's tough uh but guess what trading is tough you're starting to see more and more every time every time you get a question like this right you're starting to see more and more why the majority of uh traders fail Right. Many of you ask yourself in the beginning, 90 percent. Isn't that number kind of high? How do 90 how do 90 percent of traders fail? Well, you get this one thing that takes little traders out. A little psychology takes little traders out. Inability to trade takes a few traders out. Not dedicated takes a few traders out. Not backtesting at all takes a few traders out. Not backtesting correctly takes a few traders out. Dealing with drawdown takes a few traders out. Not treating it like a business takes a few traders out. And before you know it, right, you're chopping all these traders out until only until only nine out of the, the uh, hundred traders in the room are left. And then even within those nine, only a small percentage of those are gonna become really good. Only half of those traders are gonna become really good at what they do. So it's a tough, it's tough, but good question. All right, let's, uh, you wanted your rant, you got your rant. There you go, Ryan. Take that, take that. All right, traders. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please show us by hitting that like button and subscribing by clicking the button right below. 
If you're looking for more educational content, feel free to head over to our tradeempower.com website or also take a look and you'll see more videos available for you. Have a good one.